This huge flag was flown over the Normandy Cemetery, one of several cemeteries in Europe where Americans were laid to rest. Unfortunately, due to the high number of casualties and the logistics involved, many of our fallen service members were unable to be returned home for burial. This is a model of the B-25 bomber. This is the plane that was flown by the Doolittle Raiders. This was the first bomber that took off from an aircraft carrier and was used in the attack on Tokyo. The planes with a crew of five took off from the carrier knowing that they would not have enough fuel to return to friendly territory. Many of them were landing in China, where the pilots were helped by the local Chinese to hide and escape. Some of them also landed in the sea, and unfortunately, many of them became prisoners of war. The attack on Tokyo was a major boost in morale for the military at that time. Shown here are some of the history and photos captured as Perrin Field was being constructed. In these display cases are hundreds of items of memorabilia from the service period of Perrin Field and Perrin Air Force Base. Included you will find tools, newsletters, building signs, and many personal items. All these artifacts have been donated by service members who served at Perrin or by their families. What was living like for Army Air Corps members in 1941 when Perrin Field was being constructed? This mock-up shows the living quarters where a service member would have a bunk, a footlocker, and a place to hang uniforms. Note the construction was wood frame and would have little or no insulation. This display shows some of the items a service member would have in their office. See an old phone, an adding machine, a typewriter, a camera, a radio, etc. All the tasks that this equipment allowed a service member to do can now be done on a modern cell phone. This is an old safe used for storing classified information. An office may have had several of these, and the service member would be required to memorize all the combinations. Perrin Field, and later designated as Perrin Air Force Base, was named after Texan Elmer Perrin, born in Bourne, Texas, near San Antonio. Colonel Perrin ultimately became a pilot, and later a test pilot. Colonel Perrin died during the testing of a B-29 bomber. It was later determined that the test flight was sabotaged. Another interesting fact about Colonel Perrin was trained as a pianist at the Juilliard School of Music in New York City. As you tour the museum, you will see many items with color-coded symbols. These colors represent the different theaters of operation where these items were used. Many, of course, were used in multiple locations. This piano was from the non-commissioned officers, NCO, club on base. Base clubs were segregated by enlisted and officers, but allowed service members a place to wind down from their daily assignments. Can you imagine them gathering around the piano and singing tunes? An example of some of the helmets that pilots and ground crew use for protection and communication with each other. Note the evolution over time. Today's pilots will have helmets with heads-up displays and optically directed commands. This door came from the guard shack at the main entrance to Perrin Air Force Base. Someone was wise enough to keep it as a memento and later donate it to the museum. The P-51 Mustang. This aircraft is an American-made long-range single-seat fighter and fighter bomber. It is one of the aircraft flown by the Tuskegee Airmen. It was used during World War II and the Korean War. It was retired from use as late as 1984 and is often seen in the air shows today. Over 15,000 were produced and hundreds still fly today. The plane originally cost around $50,000 and today would sell in the millions of dollars. Active duty and former military visitors to the Perrin Museum are encouraged to place a pin on the map showing the last or current duty station.